you stop and think about it, the general public, are, they are not aware of what the losses are that the Smokehead tribe has gone through. This was our life. We've been here a long, long, long time. Uh, it seems that everybody benefits except the Spokane tribe. And all we're asking for is our due. For nearly 70 years, the Spokane tribe of Indians has been tirelessly negotiating with the federal government for compensation for the tribe's contributions and losses over the Grand Coulee Dam project the project that would forever change the lives of this forgotten tribe. We're river Indians. We lived on that river. For thousands of years, the Spokane River was the lifeblood for the Spokane tribe. The salmon it harbored nourished tribal members for centuries. At the traditional fishing grounds, the Spokanes caught salmon, sturgeon and eels for their families. The spring harvest meant survival for another year for the Spokanes. The fish were smoked and dried or traded for goods. And we never wanted for anything until Cooley Dam was built. It was called the greatest industrial achievement of its time and it's still the largest concrete structure ever built. The Grand Coulee Project began in 1933. Thousands of workers were freed from America's Great Depression. When the dam was completed in 1942, Lake Roosevelt was created, raising the waters of the Columbia and Spokane Rivers some 70 feet, which meant death for everything that was flooded upstream. Traditional fishing sites, burial grounds, sacred cultural gathering places, homes, schools, farmlands, and orchards. Everything either lay beneath Lake Roosevelt or had to be moved. They had to move to a higher area. But every day since then, our people have been finding traditional sacred areas to us that are being violated, that are being disturbed, and we're losing that because of what happened here. Uh, we have pieces of the banks falling into the river and they, and they don't fix that. And we understand it's only going to get worse. There were no options for the people of the Spokane tribe and certainly no options for the salmon. We used to fish here, salmon will never be back. And whenever our people talk of it now, the older ones that are still left, which are very, very few, there's still a sadness in their words. And you can tell the sadness in their eyes of what they lost. A verbal commitment and another promise flowed to the tribe from Washington, D.C. in 1935. A Bureau of Reclamation letter endorsed by Interior Secretary Harold Ickes inquired about, quote, reasonable revenue to the Indians for the use of their lands within the power and reservoir site areas, end quote. Federal intent also promised a share of hydropower revenues and even money for loss of fishery and resources but those intentions fell flat. In 1940, the Spokane tribe was paid just $4,700 and told to stay out of the way. Because if you Indians are going to be fair, you'll take what we're offering you. And forget that 45 years that we made billions and billions of dollars off of your land. In December 1941, tribal leaders left behind the construction on the dam and headed to Washington, D.C. to discuss settlement. Three days before those meetings were to be held, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, hurling the U.S. into World War II. Tribal leaders were told they'd be taken care of after the war. That promise also was not kept. And then um, another time we go back, and, and that's when like 9-11 happens. 
and it's even like uh, uh, with different uh, natural disasters as Katrina, when Katrina happens. So the Congress puts out a lot to help them out. And that was a natural disaster. This, this one here wasn't, it was something that was pushed upon our people. The flooding of our land at that time, it was forced upon them. By law and by historic agreements, the federal government is required to maintain a trust responsibility with Indian tribes, but that's been difficult. It's been a, a big re-education process. Almost every Congress, we either deal with new staffers or as the uh, politics has changed from uh, other Republicans in control to the Democrats in control. Beginning with Franklin Roosevelt, the Spokane tribe has now dealt with 13 different presidents. This new administration, we are looking to you for this. And all we are asking is to be fair with us and to understand what we are saying. When you do this, when you, our elected officials do this, then we know when it is said, and justice for all, justice for all includes the Spokane Tribe of Indians. Justice like the Colville Tribe received in 1994. They were awarded $53 million for their losses and also annual payments between $14 and $21 million. So a lot of our people have a hard time understanding why one tribe just across the river would be able to get it and our tribe hasn't been able to receive it yet. You would think that it would fall in suit with what how they were treated because us being neighboring tribes like that, we both suffered the same things. We don't begrudge anybody else from receiving their, their due, uh, but nobody seems to want to talk to the Spokane tribe. Everyone else seems to have benefited from the Grand Coulee system, which encompasses 30 dams throughout the Northwest. Hydropower, flood control, irrigation, and water for homes are the immediate results. They uh, use it for barging, use it for hauling wheat, they use it for flood control in Portland, and they use it for all these things. That's aside from the billions of dollars that have been made from the electricity pr production. They draw water down in here. They, they, right now it's at about a foot and a half that they're going to draw it down for the, this reservoir to help towns like Odessa because they're lacking water. And uh, they'll benefit from that. For some reason, the United States doesn't think it's necessary that we're paid for our contribution to that. There's also the benefit of being a major tourist attraction. Grand Coulee has scored hundreds of millions of tourism dollars. People have no, probably, understanding of the amount of dollars that are generated by Grand Coulee Dam through the production of power and how they take, you know, they take it for granted. Granted. In the 40s, at the time this was put in, it did help in the war effort, it did help the irrigators, it did help the recreationists. But did it help the Spokans? Not in our eyes, it didn't help us. It didn't help us a bit. All I can say is uh, they try and say uh, they, it's a legal issue, we know it's not. We know it's just an equitable issue, and that's all we've been saying. If you took a look at the BPA budget, <clears throat> in reserve alone, they have over a billion dollars in reserve. So it's, it, can't, it can't be the money thing, that's for sure. Without congressional action, it seems unlikely a settlement for the Spokane tribe will ever happen. Unfortunately, politics play a role in it, and until we can get the right people in place to understand, uh, I could say it could be a little longer for us, you know, a, lot of, a, lot of, a longer battle, I guess. Next step is to push to get the uh, legislation introduced and work with the different committees and people of, of trying to get it uh, accomplished, getting it uh, passed on both bodies. I, I think we have a uh, opportunity and I, and I think we can. It's just uh, uh, getting, in, getting in there and getting to the people and re-educating them. 70 years is a lifetime to wait and to hope. This was our sacred life. And this was a survival of a Native American people, the Spokane Tribe of Indians. 
And, and we have been willing to give, we're willing to compromise. But once we compromise, they ask us to give more. They keep asking us to give more. And so I just decided that I'm not going to give anymore. But this is something we're not going to go away. We're not invisible, we're still here. We'll always be here, so just hope to work it out.